Welcome to Residential Tech Talks. I'm Jeremy Glowacki, Executive Editor of Residential Tech Today. On this week's podcast, Scott Stevenson joins us from Denver, Colorado, where he's Director of Product Management Motorization at Hunter Douglas. Scott and I have been collaborating a lot lately thanks to the generous opportunity afforded by him, his company, and his PR agency, Caster Communications, that led to six Hunter Douglas Gen 3 motorized shades being installed in my own home. I know what my dad is saying right now as he hears this. He's getting more free stuff. Yes, but I did drive all the way up to Chicago in January for a dealer training at the start of the year, so I feel like I've kind of earned this one. (laughs) And although Scott has been with Hunter Douglas now for almost five years, I really want to dive into his tech career because he's also had seven years at a senior product manager, lighting and comfort at Control 4. And before that, nearly four years working for a company that will test the memories of veteran members of the industry, Colorado VNet. Today, I want to retrace Scott's path to becoming a motorized shades expert, talk about what makes Hunter Douglas Gen 3 shades better than Gen 2, and share some of the things that I've learned about motorized shades in the relatively short amount of time that I've lived with them in my house. Scott Stevenson, welcome to the podcast. Great to see you again. Good to see you too, Jeremy. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks again for the shades. I've been loving them so far. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it's it's one of those things I've been fortunate to have been given a chance to experience a lot of uh, home tech in my house over the years. But that final frontier for a long time has been motorized shades. Um, I love whole house music. I love lighting control. Um, but I've always said I really want a more efficient way to control the light that's coming into my home. Um, and uh, this past Cedia, although um, Hunter Douglas wasn't able to exhibit, you did come to Indiana for a visit to your family who's in Indiana and to attend the show. And you and I sat down and chatted and later went to dinner with Kim and Olivia from the agency. Uh, and we started our chat about making this this dream of motorized shades a reality for me. Um, but first you had to launch Gen 3. Um, how tough was launching product in today's world of supply chain delays? That couldn't have been easy getting product, uh, new product out the door. No, it definitely, it, you know, launching a, a, a major, you know, system upgrade like Gen 3 is challenging even in the best of times from a supply chain standpoint. Uh, and this just added a whole nother layer of complexity upon it. Uh, you know, especially we're, you know, we're having to, to because it's not like something completely new, uh, you know, it's, it, it is very much a, a complete overhaul of our PowerView platform, but we're still taking, you know, a major pipeline of orders and trying to figure out, okay, how quickly is the transition gonna happen to Gen 3? managing supply chain of both of those systems and then you know of course building up inventory of all the new stuff um you know and then things where you got you know some things that some components that are shared across both platforms and some that are brand new to to gen 3 and it it definitely uh it 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 certainly taxed our our materials team our engineering team you know a lot of things of just having to go figure out okay shoot we got to figure out an alternate part here because suddenly we, you know, they're, they're telling us we're only going to get 30% of what we, you know, ordered a year ago. Uh, and that's the kind of stuff that's just crazy. And yeah, even now, I mean, you know, it's, it's great to be out the door and, you know, I've, I'm, I'm confident in our uh, ability to meet demand in the, certainly in the, the short term over the next, you know, four five, six months, but you're still, that, that doesn't let you take, you know, take that foot off the gas, so to speak. I mean, there's constantly new things coming in from a supply chain standpoint that it's, oh, you know, this component's now on allocation. This one suddenly we can't get, and you're just constantly having to scramble. It's, it's, it's not easy still. That's for sure. Well, having experienced it somewhat as a customer, it's been really enlightening to me to know what it's like to uh, go for, through the showroom process. Uh, I got the insight of a dealer as well uh, at that training in Chicago. Um, that was a unique insight that you wouldn't normally have as a customer. But uh, that, I, I guess I was busy taking notes and trying to keep up with, here's what's new, Here, here's what you're going to need to understand as an installer, uh, as you sell these things. Um, having only been sort of 
cursory uh, understanding of the product before them, because my my knowledge doesn't need to go deep on on product lines. Typically, I, I know uh, basics of things, um, what I need to cover editorially. So comparing and contrasting, it was a little hard for me. But uh, I took a lot of notes, and we did a briefing as the product launch actually started to come to fruition, and it, and it all kind of came back together. But in the meantime, you had set up after my training, a visit to uh, a design center near near where I live. And I got to uh, see a really amazing um, product setup that I guess is kind of becoming the standard for your best showrooms, I believe. Uh, yep. th- this was at Drapery Street this, uh, in the Indiana Design Center, literally five minutes from my house, really <laughs> very convenient location. <laughs> and Karen, the owner there, met with me and um, just kind of took me through all the different uh, products in, in the line. And I think for her, the Gen 3 stuff was starting to just sort of sink in what's going to be available. But uh, how uh, I, it's hard to really explain how uh, expansive that showroom experience was from a Hunter Douglas standpoint. But here I was in a place that's window coverings in general, and then there's just Hunter Douglas everywhere. Like, that's pretty, pretty, pretty amazing setup. How uh, common is that across the country in different showrooms? So, I mean, we've got the, the experience you had was with one of our gallery dealers and they, they, you know, they have basically, they must have at least one of every, every product that we make. Uh, and, you know, we're starting to see more and more of those gallery locations transition to, you know, the vast majority of what they, they have in there is, is running off of the power view system rather than, than manual shades, because that's just where everything is, is going these days. Um, so you know, the, the experience you had was definitely one of the, the newer ones where they've really upgraded the, the look and feel of the store, but we are rapidly transitioning a lot of our dealers over to that, um, you know, very quickly because they, they see the the, the benefits of this upgraded experience and it's it's been really nice and i mean i think yeah like you said it's it it does feel like an elevated experience when you when you walk in there and it but what's also important i think is it gives you that that ability to really see all of the different products that we make because i think one of the biggest things that differentiates hunter douglas compared to most of the other companies out there that are doing motorized shades is the breadth of the different types of products. And, you know, we can talk a little bit about, about what you ended up choosing, but it's, you know, we don't just make a basic roller shade that goes up and down. You know, we, we make shades that go up and down or maybe open from the top or from the bottom and from the top down, or, you know, open up and up, go up and down and tilt and, and have, you know, shears in between and all these different kinds of options that, that really having that dealer help you to understand, okay, here's my need, here's my room, here's what I'm trying to accomplish, here's, you know, the environment, here's, you know, it's north facing, it's south facing, here's how close my neighbors are, all that kind of stuff, and be able to to have an experienced dealer to say, hey, you know, here's some options that we think would really be ideal for your environment. Yeah, and walking through that experience, and and I'll I'll back up a minute. I I kind of forget like oh yeah you don't it's not just motorized. It's not just power view. You've got uh, manual um, shades from before, and uh, and maybe we can talk a little bit about the history of Hunter Douglas in the custom integration space as well, and how uh, you've been as a company embraced this channel um, fairly recently. I mean, grand scheme of things, fairly recently. Yeah. Yep. Um, but. Uh, yeah, so walking through that for me, um, again, Karen at Drapery Street was really great. It just sort of treated me as a real customer, not as this press person getting some free stuff <laughs> um, <laughs> and asking me, what what are your needs here? What are you trying to achieve? And I'm, I'm thinking, wow, I'm just getting a, a great opportunity here. I, I'll take whatever Hunter Douglas wants to provide. But ultimately, what I was trying to do was to match uh, existing manual um blinds, uh, wood, wood slat blinds that I had in my house that I knew were going to be, uh, on the lower level of the front of the house. Whereas these were going to be on the upper level. I wanted to make sure that those aesthetically looked similar from the outside, just to not look completely bizarre. And so that was one, one challenge. And then, um, I was hoping to have some room darkening opportunities there as well. And, and we talked about, well, do you really want to dark or do you want it to just, basically be a shade because 
there's certain things can seal out the light, but the other things you're going to have a little bit of a border. And just, there was some expectation setting there. And I said, I don't need it to be blackout, blackout, like it's a home theater. It's, it just needs to basically allow me to sleep in a little bit in the morning at <laughs> and, and maybe to knock out the the heat of the sun and at noontime. But, um, mm-hmm. uh, so, so we worked through that and, uh, and I guess what what we ended up was a, a pretty good blend of those those um, those options that I was looking for. Um, we can k- kind of get into to that, but uh, I really wanted to talk more about how this PowerView Gen three product launch really achieved some goals. What what types of uh, improvements the company was looking to make? If you could maybe start us off by overall goal. Um, I know simplicity is a is a major um, a guiding principle for the company for products. So, where do you start as far as what do we want to do from Gen three, to, Gen two to Gen three? Yeah, uh, yeah. So we really, when we started off the Gen three project, we set three fundamental goals in place, and those were kind of our you know, our north stars, if you will, through the through the whole project. Um, one was simplicity, uh, the next was reliability, and then scalability. Um, simplicity was really, you know, certainly there was an aspect of it that was for the end user, for that consumer in their home, making it so that if they're in our app, it's just really plain and obvious how to do things. Um, but really where we wanted to go with the simplicity standpoint was on the install and setup side of things for the, the person who is coming in to into the consumer's home and taking it from, you know, unboxing the shades to a fully functional operational motorized uh, and automated system. And just a lot of things that we did to really make that whole setup process go smooth and easy, make it so that really, frankly, even if you've never had any training whatsoever, that you can you know, open up the app and it just guides you through the process and it does it in a very efficient way. Uh, and like we did some time studies to find that, that, you know, in the past, if you know, we took like a, a three room 10 shade setup and, you know, had, had people try this, did uh, you know, a number of really experienced installers and you were looking at a good, probably somewhere in the order of 40 to 45 minutes to go from shades, you know, installed in the windows to, okay, now I'm done, I'm out the door. Uh, and then with Gen 3, it's literally down to 10 to 15 minutes for that same project. So much simpler, much more straightforward. And then, you know, just a lot fewer places that an installer can get themselves hung up and, you know, in a situation where, you know, in the past, you really, again, you kind of had to know what you were doing and you had to do them in the right order. If you didn't do that, then you were probably going to have to go back and redo the whole thing all over from scratch. Uh, now this, it just walks you through this and you just can't get yourself in that situation anymore. So, so that was the the simplicity side of it. Um, you know, reliability, obviously everybody wants a, you know, reliable system. But for us, that was really about, you know, the shade should always be where you want it, when you want it there, no matter how you told it to get there, whether that's, you know, picking up our remote, whether that's using our app, whether that's using a a third party control system, or just because it's running on a schedule and that's what it's going to do, you know? Um, So all of those things, and we, a lot of different things go into, of course, to reliability. Uh, One of the biggest changes we made from the previous generation was in the radio technology that we're using. Um, The the previous generation of PowerView utilized a a proprietary uh, RF protocol that, you know, was developed in-house. And uh, with Gen 3, we've gone to the use of Bluetooth Low Energy. It's a really nice protocol, for, in particular for motorized shades, because of the the. Um, it's a very efficient protocol, so it works really well from a, a from the standpoint of battery powered shades, uh, which is very important to us. Um, but it also is great at doing things like avoiding other RF stuff going on in the home. It operates, it's it's a 2.4 gigahertz protocol, but it operates over 40 different channels within the 2.4 spectrum. And it's constantly frequency hopping between those channels and um, deciding which one is the best. And it always, um, every message that gets sent out, gets sent out over three channels all at once. And the other nice thing is every single message that's sent out is acknowledged by the the shade. So like if if you send a message to say, hey, you know, move to move to 50%, the 
the shade responds and says, great, I'm moving to 50% now. And then we actually eight times every second get a message from that shade saying, here's where I am, here's where I am. So I'm at 100%, I'm at 99%, I'm at 98%. So really just all of that two-way feedback um, provides a lot of reliability as well. And then the final one was scalability. And that, you know, we really thought about that from the standpoint of both scaling down to the smallest, you know, one one shade in the home, all the way up to you know, our largest hundreds of shades type of projects. And and what we saw in particular at the small end of that scale was, you know, that customer who maybe just bought the one motorized shade because they wanted, you know, it's the one over the bathtub that you don't <laughs> want to have to climb into the bathtub every time to open and close, or it's the one that's really up high. They were getting a motorized shade but they were not getting an automated shade because you you know you had to buy the extra hardware to to there was our hub that had there was the thing that would run a schedule and all this stuff um and that's what you know you had to have that in order to use the app well one of the great things about using bluetooth bluetooth low energy is your phone has a bluetooth radio on it so your phone can talk directly to the shades in these small installs and that allows us to go ahead use the app create a schedule, the schedule just lives on the shade, the phone keeps the shade updated, the clock updated. And that way that one customer with the shade over the tub, hey, their shade can just close automatically at sunset every day. And they don't have to even worry about coming into the, 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 the bathroom and going, oh crud, I forgot to come in and, and close it at night. So, you know, scaling that way from a small standpoint. And then, you know, of course, with especially with our, our custom integrator dealers, a lot of those tend to be bigger projects. And we wanted to make sure that we scale up as well. And that's where our, our gateway comes into play. And you can you know, really scale as needed um, to just about any size project. So again, those were the three fundamental guiding principles. Yeah. And I would say that uh, starting with simplicity, uh, that was really uh, evident to me when my installer came. I, I would say he spent the majority of his time here, frankly, unboxing the shades. Um, once all that was done, all the staging was done, the installation and the programming. Programming was the quickest part. Um, and, and some of that he showed me a little bit of how to program the remotes and just in case I needed to do it myself or make changes to them. But uh, he, he was doing his, literally his second um, Gen 3 installation because he had done one on his own home as a test and had done the training and all of that. But uh, he, he, there were a couple of times when he said, well, Gen 2 did it this way. I think this is the right thing. You know, it was a little bit like a feel his way through it. But he was very uh, uh, adept at what he was doing, very comfortable with it. And it was very efficient. Um, and then uh, training was was very uh, straightforward as well. And once I had a chance to sit down with the app and, and walk through the, the different setups and changes that I could make to personalize the the programming and automations and uh, all of that, it was it was very straightforward and simple from the end user standpoint. Um, so so that that really was I felt achieved again based on what was you've said to me about the previous experience. Um, and it's funny you talk about the bathtub. That is exactly an app, uh, uh, one of the applications that I had was that one where I'd always have to step through the bathtub to close a blind at night. Um, and so if nothing else, I wanted to fix that yep. <laughs> dilemma. Um, but of course you gave me a lot of other options as well. So, so we did, we ended up doing, um, the two forward facing front of the house, uh, master bedroom to my daughter is also front of the house, uh, shades that, ma that master bath tub situation, uh, and then, a, a shared hallway bathroom that's also the front of the house because i wanted to make sure that we had that uh across same look across the top level which that was i kept kind of adding a little can i get one more <laughs> <laughs> um and of course i would love my whole house to be but there's there's only so far you can push when you're getting stuff for free and i really appreciate it all um so you know when when you look at uh the the app experience um what what is that like not having seen what it used to look like um how much has changed there for the end user as far as what the app looks like and how it functions i think a lot of it is certainly if you were a a, a power view customer you know six months ago and you, and you open up the app today 
and you had Gen 3, it's, it's going to be a familiar experience to you. Um, there, it's not a dramatic change from an end user standpoint. Uh, there's just, a, I think there are definitely things that are, you know, streamlined and, and simpler and easier to do. Um, you know, we tried to just polish things up a little bit, but from an end consumer standpoint, uh, I, I don't think there were dramatic changes to the app. Um, just, you know, some polish, some refinement, uh, and, and just making it, you know, just making it look better and operate more smoothly. Uh, but certainly if you're an installer and going through the, that setup process, it looks dramatically different. Okay. Right. And, uh, and you, you mentioned the gateway, um, and not having to use that, but you, you were, um, again, generous enough to give me one just in case. And I think that was mostly because of the, the integration with, uh, control four, um, that, that is coming in the future. We, we haven't done that yet, but I am, I have a control four system. I don't absolutely need it because I feel like between the app and the, the actual pebble remotes, I have a lot of control options, but, uh, you know, you never know. You might want to be walk up to the panel mm-hmm. and touch uh, a shade uh, setting and and go into some automation. But uh, uh, so that that would be another reason to have the the gateways that uh, integration, correct? Yeah, definitely. the The gateway it, it certainly required any time you want to use any type of third party control, whether that would be Control Four or Google or whatever, uh, and then. Um, it's also what, like I mentioned before, it's what, it's what helps you scale. So really anytime what we're telling our dealers is if you're doing anything more than a single room and you really should be adding the gateway. And if you're doing, you know, even in a single room, if it's more than four shades, you probably ought to be adding the gateway. It's just going to make the whole system work better. Okay. All right. So, um, so then what we ended up with my, my shades then, and, uh, and I'm still learning lingo. Uh, I have the dual light, um, and that is the part that allows me to have the, um, both the blackout and the regular blind part of the shade. Maybe you can take over the terminology so I don't screw that up. No, yeah, no, you're, you're doing good. Um, yeah. So you got what we call silhouette dual light. So silhouette silhouette is, is one of our, um, kind of signature products. Uh, it's something we invented where you, you have a a, a shade that goes up and down and then you have veins that, that tilt with a, there's a front shear and a back shear, um, that really, it, it provides a, a lot of light control because you can, you, you know, you can obviously lift the shade all the way up and out of the way in which you get complete view through and, and, and full, full light coming in, but you can also bring that down and open the veins to have the, um, yeah, that more like, uh, soft diffused light. And then you could close the veins to get more like, um, truly filtered light. And then in your case, um, that what we add onto that is what we call the dual light, where it also incorporates a rear um, room darkening shade uh, that's part of it that can come down behind everything. And that's it's actually all done with with one motor uh, and one tube. Uh, that's that's a unique technology to us. Um, but you know, it makes up for a really cool product. You get an incredible variety of the ability to control that light coming from outside uh, in, in different, you know, form, ev- really everything from, like I said, room darkening to soft diffused to full brightness, um, all, you know, just with one single product. Uh, and it's a, it definitely is, is, it's a very popular product because of that. Well, that's, that's me. I picked the popular stuff, but <laughs> it, it's been great. Um, I do want to continue our co- conversation with Scott Stevenson, but uh, let's take a short break. Do you want superior smart home automation at a great value? Shelly Wi-Fi relays by Alterco Robotics cover DC to line voltage, allowing you to control lights, outlets, appliances, garage doors, pumps, and much more. There are Shelly sensors and power measurement devices to help you measure temperature, humidity, lux, or motion, and electrical consumption from single wire to three phase with neutral. You can use Shelly with a licensed driver for Control 4, Elon, or other premium systems, as well as your customer's existing hub, voice assistant, or any platform that accepts REST, MQTT, or CoAP. 
Shelly can make IoT very easy. Available now at Blackwire, City Electric Supply, and Worthington, or at ShellyUSA.com. Welcome back. We're talking with Scott Stevenson from Hunter Douglas. And uh, Scott, I was we were talking about my shades, which is you know my favorite topic, but uh, <laughs> specifically uh, the 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 options for having uh, room darkening and and some diffuse lighting. And uh, one of the things I was looking forward to the most was um, automation and scenes and being able to just set, um, uh, I guess, getting my lingo correct as well as far as what the difference is. Um, so, so scenes, uh, when it comes to shades, it's what the shade does. And then the automation is basically when it does it, uh, as yeah. far as I understand it. Okay. Yeah. So the, the automation of having the the room darkening happen at sundown to me was like the the game changer that's what i was looking forward to the most basically um more than anything in the winter that's going to be a huge one because that time when the when it's uh, suddenly it's five o'clock and it's dark outside and you're upstairs just lights are left on by your kids and everybody's looking in your house (laughs) Um, to be able to have that just set for sundown with the uh with the time clock tell you know changing throughout the year whenever that sundown is that's uh that's really cool so that's been great and then learning what i wanted to do in the morning is is has been a uh a work in progress let's put it that way um uh, you know, different people want different things my daughter she's an early riser so we have it set that's pretty pretty straightforward when it when it opens for her but for my wife she's like can we just turn it off for the weekend <laughs> Because I don't want it to wake me up, um, yeah. but but it's been very productive. We we have the lights basically come on because the the uh, room darkening opens, and it, and that's that's been a lot of fun. So um, enjoyed all of it so far, and uh, I th- I think I've probably bored everybody by my own personal experience. But at this point, I do want to talk about a little bit more about your background, Scott. I um, I I, I want to go back. We we can talk about Colorado VNet a little bit, because there might be people that just don't even know what that company uh, did, what what its milestones were at the time and where where it came from and where it went. Um, but going way back, did you ever uh, think as a kid or in like even in high school and college that you were going to go into te- the tech field at all? Well, I um my my undergraduate degree is actually electrical engineering so certainly from a you know and from an early age i was you know i was the kid who was taking things apart to figure out how they worked <laughs> yep um you know especially like if if something i i remember uh a not so pleasant incident of uh dropping my my nice camera into the into the lake oh, no. and ruining it but it was like well i'm gonna take this thing apart and see what's inside here you know <laughs> so um th- that was always me um so you know i got an engineering degree have, have never been a practicing engineer um pretty much went into marketing and product and and you know have, have very much enjoyed that as a career but having that technical background has definitely helped me, um, you know, both from the standpoint of being able to communicate effectively with our engineers, uh, you know, engineers yeah. throughout my career that I've worked with. And, um, you know, and also just, I get excited about this stuff. Mm. Um, that's, I've always, uh, I've always enjoyed being in, you know, I've worked in several different industries, um, but, you know, in the smart home world for the last 15 plus now. Um, but you know, in all cases, it's been stuff where it's, you know, think something where really cool, exciting technology is going on. Yeah. And, uh, so again, some early stops there, but when, when you get to Colorado VNet, um, and it's a blur for me to remember everything that company was doing. Um, what, what can you, Tell folks who may not know Colorado Vina about what that company was trying to achieve and uh, what what you felt good about while you were there. Yeah. Yeah. It was, a, you know, it was an interesting company. It was a, a startup, really, still when I joined it, um, very much so, and focused on primarily lighting control and uh, distributed audio at the time. Uh, did, uh, in later years, branched out into some... Um, 
you know, video storage uh, type of stuff that everybody was trying to get into at that point. But, but I think you know, really, we we were one of the first to do um, real IP distribution of audio, uh, and had a really interesting. We, uh, there's still people who come up and tell me that we we had the best looking touchscreens that have ever been made. That's for true. The yeah. Industry. I remember. Um, yeah, really, kind of like a floating glass type of look. Um, just really slick. Uh, and then, uh, you know, what was a, at the time a, a really sort of different way of approaching um, lighting control, both from a sort of a centralized but semi-distributed standpoint, uh, and then also, uh, you know, and that was all kind of hardwired uh, and using um, using the um, CAN uh, can bridge can can protocol, which is used a lot in actually automobiles too. That's your your cars use a lot of of uh, it's you know C A N capital C capital A capital N as as the the um, underlying communications technology. Uh, we took that and applied it to lighting control, and I I don't think anybody else yet to this day has ever done that. And it's a because it is in your car. It's a highly reliable. Um, way of doing things. Um, so yeah, just you know, it was a really innovative company doing some really interesting things. You know, unfortunately, it was one of those situations where it just fell victim to the the crash of 2008, you know, to 2010. We we managed to last two till 2010, I guess. Um, uh, to yeah, 2010. Uh, but the the founder uh, who you know was a you know serial entrepreneur this was i think his fifth company you know had had set for several successful ones prior to this he uh yeah unfortunately still had a lot of wealth but but not a lot of cash at that point mm. and yeah when you when you don't have cash it's hard to keep a company going so that that, that was an unfortunate thing i think i think you know given some extra runway colorado vnet could have continued to do some interesting things well, you you landed on your feet by going to a well-respected brand and control for um, what was the experience? How much did that experience change for you as far as working for a serial entrepreneur to a, a little more established company, I guess, at that point with control for? Yeah, um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, they were definitely more established. Control for had been, I think they formed in 2004 and I joined in, and, and I think they first started shipping product in 2005 and I joined them in 2010. So, yeah. you know, so they definitely were, um, were, uh, much more, um, of a, I guess, call it a real company at that point. Um, they were, you know, rapidly becoming the leader in the CI world in terms of the, the, the full control home automation standpoint. Uh, and so I joined them at a great time. I think I was employee number like low 200s, something like that. Um, you know, so still, still a time where it was growing rapidly, uh, still trying to figure out how to make things happen. How do we become profitable? I was there through the IPO. So that was mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, that was a great experience to, to be a part of. Uh, and, and just a lot of fun, you know, came in um, really with a you know, an opportunity to completely overhaul their lighting control product line. Um, Ironically, in some ways, it was uh, uh, Gen 3 at that. So this is my second go around of launching a, a big Gen 3 thing. Um, but uh, Control Force Gen 3 lighting and then their, their panelized lighting uh, were you know, things that, that really from you know, day one that I got there was what I started figuring out what is it we're going to do and how do we get there. And uh, so that was a great experience for me. You know, really. And I, I mean, there are some just really smart talented people at control for and it, it was a, it was a lot of fun to be a part of well so bring us up to current day with hunter douglas and i one of the things i touched upon but i didn't really go into with you yet is how the company is uh has gone from uh a certain perspective on who its customers are or who its dealers are to really embracing the custom integration channel mm -hmm. um what was that process like for the company how has that changed the company working with yeah MCI? it's it's been really interesting i mean to be honest so i joined hunter douglas in the late fall of, of 2017 so you know i've been here getting close to five years now 
Uh, honestly, when I joined, I was the only person in this company who really knew anything about the CI world, wow. at least in any depth. Yeah. Um, you know, there were people here who'd attended CDA, you know, year after year, but you know, we had very few custom integrator dealers. They really didn't get much attention. Um, the, the dealer programs that we had in place just didn't make sense for a CI dealer. They were designed for a company that sells window coverings. That's their primary business. Uh, and so the, the dealer programs didn't make sense. Um, the way we tried to, uh, you know, to think about that dealer and help them grow their business didn't make sense. You know, th there were just all these things that, that were not set up to to serve that that custom integrator dealer well. Um, and, and, you know, to be honest with you, the, the, the things that are that are our advantages in in the world out there as a whole the breadth of our product everything all of our offerings can quite frankly be overwhelming to a, a ci dealer who's used to selling roller screen shades and, and that's really all they know uh, so working with you know some of our, our sales leadership that that's you know agreed with me that there was this opportunity um you know we really set about to creating some dealer programs that that were more tailored to the CI channel that made sense if you're a CI dealer that isn't again focused on you know these people who, who do nothing but sell window coverings um tried to to pare it down to something that that's a little more bite-sized um even then quite frankly it's a it's a big bite and we recognize that um but but you know it's not 26 products that you're trying to come up to speed on all at once it's it's seven or eight of them and mm -hmm. you know we're trying to say okay no you know here's the actually the three or four that are you know going to be your bread and butter and you know make sure you get those to where you understand them and then you can grow from there but you know we, we saw that there was a lot of opportunity here um we also frankly had a lot of ci dealers coming to us and saying look you guys make products that nobody else makes that our cust my customer is asking for and I can't provide it to them currently. Mm. And so, you know, it, 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 I think it was, it was, you know, it's a great marriage from that standpoint, but you know, we've gone from, and when we really, I think it was probably early 2019 when we kind of really got these programs in place and started putting real focus on it. And, you know, we've gone from what at the time was less than 30 CI dealers to now, you know, I think we'll probably finish out this year over a little over 500 oh, wow. CI dealers. Uh, you know, it's we're we're being a little bit careful in our growth in the channel. Um, you know, we're trying to, to make sure that we don't, you know, as they say, get too far over your skis uh, and, you know, make sure we grow in a smart way within the channel. Um, but we're also, you know, we're doing some things that, uh, that, you know, had never been done before in terms of Hunter Douglas that are really designed for the channel. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we launched our, our PowerView Plus system, which is a, a hardwired control um, system. So, you know, CI dealers, by their very nature, if, if they can pull a wire somewhere and control it over that wire, they're going to do that. That's their preference versus wireless. Um, whereas for our traditional dealers, most of them are coming in after the, you know, after the customer's already in the home. Um, so PowerView Plus was very much designed with the CI dealer in mind. And, uh, you know, we've got some other things coming up. Uh, you know, there's going to be, for the first time ever, we will be uh, debuting something at Cedia uh, that, that nobody will have ever seen before. Uh, and that, so we're really looking forward to that. So definitely a lot of focus on the CI channel now. We see it as a real opportunity. And, and you know, we're having some great conversations with some really good dealers out there. I, I seem to remember, and this might be a, uh, very it makes sense because of your uh your control four experience did you begin as a partner company uh in that pavilion at the control four booth at cedia yeah yeah so yeah, that was that a was good our, convenient um, way in entry entree into the show i yeah. guess i remember that well and and going well this is going to be interesting this is a little company because <laughs> everything is a pavilion that's just like a little tabletop almost sort of set up but uh now, now you're launching product at Cedia, which is going to be great. Um, and I was really, uh, one of the things I didn't touch on with my own experience, you talk about the hardwire control um, and just the, the power aspect of it. I think one of the reasons why I was 
it took me so long to be able to experience this is that the battery shades has become a, a normal thing, a very reliable product. And uh, you have rechargeable wands that you can uh, have as part of it, but I've got the ones that are uh, the standard batteries that last, I guess, about a year. Um, and, and so it really, yeah, that really with, opens it up. Yeah. With the, the way your windows were designed um, and having to do the, the outside mount in front of the, the, the trim around the, the, there's that trim around your windows. Um, I, I really wanted you to be able to experience the rechargeable, but I just knew that it was going to be hard to, to, to get, make that happen. And, and that, uh, the alkaline battery one is so nice and small. It just tucks right up in there. So I, I just thought it'd be a better experience for your particular install. Yeah. And it's totally fine. I mean, honestly, um, either way would have been great. And I, I'm happy to, to experience what I have and, and it's just made it all possible from a ret retrofit standpoint to have battery powered shades that you can rely on like that and you uh the only time that it ever comes up is like oh you've got a battery in here and you think about it for a second is you've got this quiet mode that you can do uh especially mm -hmm. for a morning function or maybe it's a theater i don't, I don't know what other option it would be re reason you would have that but it says you know this may drain your battery quicker to do this yeah so I've just, I've, I've played around with it. Um, it's not necessary. It's just kind of a nice little thing to think about in the morning. Like you don't want to be completely awakened by it. It's not loud though. So <laughs> either way, it's not loud. Um, yeah. so yeah, very that, that, that it's, we call it discrete mode and it's, uh, it basically, um, moves the shades at half speed. And so it does, you know, make, it makes everything quieter, but because it's taking the shade twice as long to, to move, you're running it for longer, which is therefore going to deplete your batteries faster. Right. Right. Okay. Well, um, I, I am enjoying it so far. It's been great. And, uh, it's, it's made my room, my rooms in my 30 year old house look more elegant and modern. And I, I, I'm enjoying that as well from the aesthetic standpoint, but just functionality wise, it's just been great. So Good. thanks again, Scott, and great, great, uh, talking to you about gen three and, uh, hope it continues to go well as the rollout continues. Thanks. Appreciate it. I really appreciate you having me today. Scott Stevenson is Director of Product Management Motorization at Hunter Douglas. You can learn more about Hunter Douglas at HunterDouglas.com. And that wraps up today's show. If you're new to Residential Tech Talks, please subscribe to the weekly podcast on your preferred platform and consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Also, check out all the latest residential tech news at the magazine's website, ResTechToday.com, where you can also subscribe to the print or digital magazine, and to our Tuesday and Friday email newsletters. Until next time, please stay safe, stay inspired, and let us know if you have a great story to tell.